thousands of stars you see when you look up at the night sky, every one of them is living in a kingdom between two collapses. An initial collapse of a dark stellar gas cloud to form the star, and a final collapse of the moon and star on the way to the end of the day. He's posting on Twitter trying to get a hold of anybody that'll listen, basically. The president, the CIA, NSA, saying that there are uh, two nuclear devices in the country. One's in Las Vegas, and the other is en route to Denver, or in Denver. So Denver and Vegas, Colorado, Nevada. And he's saying that there's two uh, nuclear devices, and I don't know if both are, or the, the Vegas one is to be detonated uh, by ISIS, according to this guy, on New Year's Eve in Vegas. Um, but he's, he's pretty adamant about it. Um, and at first I was pretty intrigued, and then I had to look at his tweets and, and try to make my own conclusion and we can talk about that a little later but I think you'll be able to draw your own conclusion the reason I want to cover it is because a it's it's an intriguing story and B a lot of not a lot of other people but a few other people that are watching are, are following this guy and asking him and, and, and trying to make sure that because you never know okay Sandeep Gondal is from Prune, India. Prune, India. Uh, his Twitter account, he joined April 2015. I know this guy's name. I've heard of him somewhere. But um, you shouldn't be following it because it's interesting. You should be following it because of everything that's happening in the background. And all that has already happened here in Las Vegas this year. Um, you know, for years we have been on, um, we have heard warnings of terrorist threats. We have the October uh, shooting at Mandalay Bay, which we're still not getting the truth on. But thank you to independent journalists, we are beginning to see what was really happening, which is a hell of a lot more than uh, Sheriff Lombardo is willing to say, because... Um, you know, he doesn't work for the people like he's supposed to. Um, but anywho, I mean, I'm not going to get down on the guy because I understand the uh, the federal agencies, especially the FBI, they're always in the background everywhere here in Las Vegas. They run the show here. Those that live here know this. But this is concerning to me, and I want to thank a subscriber for sending this to me. And guys, um, I put together a little video um, I've, I've still got my ear to the wall. I'm listening. Um, I can't really reply to everything because of the amount of work that I have to get done, but I'm still staying up to date. And, uh, I went out today and mailed off the books. I've got another shipment of books coming in, but for those that have already requested them, uh, they're on the way. And for those I did send an email to let you know that you'll be in the second batch. But I did get a few more books in today and I'll be sending those out. Probably get up tomorrow and package those up while I'm having my coffee so I can get them to you. Okay, I didn't forget about you. I'll mail them off uh, probably Monday. You'll probably get them uh, sometime next week. But you're not going to have them by the first of the year because you're the second batch. I did order, uh, I found, I think it was nine more books, and six of those are already gone. I've already committed them to uh, people that have requested the book, so I have three of those left. Um, I haven't gotten them in the mail yet, but if you go to my video, uh, right here, walk in your God-given authority, or it will be used against you. And you listen to that video, if you would like a copy of this book, I have three copies that are going to be coming in that are not uh, spoken for. 
If you would like a copy of the book, let me know. If you've already requested a copy uh, through my email, uh, just want to let you know that I got your messages and waiting for the rest of the books to come in so I can send them out to you. Anywho, I want to get back to this. Um, this is alarming. With anybody that's following the QAnon um, posts, um, you know, I was very skeptical about those posts. And I watched a video this morning uh, of people on the 4chan channel uh, talking about why they believe it's real. And they were pointing out many instances and confirmations by Donald Trump. Um, you know, that this guy, uh, Q, actually knows information before it's put out. And you have to go back to the past to look to confirm that what he's saying is true. If you can't figure it out as he's saying it. <clears throat> and so far... Um, all the information that he's put out has been accurate and people have been able to confirm it. So I am uh, more and more, my mind is drifting out of cognitive dissonance and is really beginning to absorb this and accept it as truth. And so now to hear about these uh, nukes that are... One may be in Vegas and the other is headed to Denver. I'm concerned and I would like confirmation. I sent out a message to someone um, asking for confirmation on this that, that has a inside source on this stuff. And I'm hoping that we can tune in to Roy Potter's channel and get confirmation if this is real, if Sandeep is um, real or what Q is saying about this or what is going on. Uh, we need to know, especially for those of us that live here in Vegas. Okay, so at the end of the year, this is how my office looks. I have a, a, a customer's computer right here that I'm getting um, a bookkeeping software set up on and also certain equipment right there in those boxes and there's certain adjustments that have to be made to their bookkeeping software and that's what those documents are there on um, the table and then I have another customers laptop right there with their printer to print off um, do, do the adjustments in their bookkeeping software and print off their final reports for uh, tax preparing and then over here on the printer that's my printer I've got a customer that is sending me their year-end financial reports uh, to make adjustments and then their receipts will be coming in the mail so that I can ensure that their reports are accurate and then over here I have reports being created uh, to do their uh, uh, accounts and bank reconciliations for every month this year. And so I'll move it over here so you guys can see. So I've got three months worth sitting there on my desk that I'm going to be reconciling in the computer there from an Excel spreadsheet that I just create for the customers. And then I have two accounts, see the boxes here? I have two accounts waiting for me to work on their bookkeeping stuff also so that they are ready to file taxes. And it's December 30th. And this is what I mean, um, a lot of small business owners wait till the last minute. <clears throat> but I have one, two, three, four, I have six customers uh, that get their stuff into me on time but you know it requires a lot of time and, and attention these six individuals or companies will get their taxes filed on time and somewhere around February and March I'll start getting other customers um, receipts and financial reports that they want done immediately because they got to file their taxes and they never get it immediately because they didn't take care of it all year long. So then they're going to have to file an extension, which is what they do every year, you know. But this is uh, 
this is what I've been working on. This is what I do around the holidays, starting October 1st. I start getting all these financial reports ready so that my customers can file their taxes on time. Um, and this is what it's like until um, April 15th. So while everybody, you know, the holidays are kind of a nightmare for me, but it's, it's good income. You know, I find that uh, May, June, July, August, and September, it's relatively slow. I can, you know, do what I want. I just have maybe four or five hours of work to do every month, and that's it. And then uh, the last six, the last three months of the year, and the first three months of the following year is when I get all my work done. December 30th, 2017. Um, Ammon Bundy posted a link up on his Facebook page um, that leads to an article by The Oregon Live. He says, take a deep breath before reading this the audacity of the U.S. federal prosecution team where lies are the truth and truth is lies. Don't worry, it's not their money they're spending on this witch hunt. You see, Seawall on January 8, 2018 in Vegas to hear the judge's decision. P.S. We know who wins the battle in the end, fear not. So, and so I clicked on the link and Guys, this is unbelievable. He said that uh, the Brady violations found by the court are regrettable and benefit no one. Nevada Acting U.S. Attorney Steve Myrie wrote in a 55-page legal brief, but because the government neither flagrantly violated nor recklessly disregarded its obligation, the appropriate remedy for such violations is a new trial. The prosecutors claim they couldn't simply turn over all the material citing harassment and threats made to witnesses, victims, and officers in the case who would be in jeopardy if personal information got out, especially on social media. I'm sorry, but you know what? Redact the information and then give the documents to the guys, okay? But I'll tell you something else. This discovery has been sealed, okay? There are very few items that have been leaked. And another thing is, there are no threats. The only one that has been threatening or harassing anyone is the federal government threatening and harassing the people. Okay, and that is what the evidence shows. Was it not threatening, harassing, intimidating um, the supporters and the Bundys in April 2014? They were. All these things, it's, it's like, my personal opinion I think this prosecutor, Steve Myrie, I think he needs to have some drug testing. That's what I need. This man lives in La La Land, okay? This is not reality. Every, everything he says that has been done is actually what it has been done, but not those that, have, that are being accused of doing it. Um, it has been the federal agencies and their goons that have been doing all these things. If there is any threats or intimidation or harassment going on, I would check with the other federal agencies to find out who is doing it. Because we saw out in Oregon that um, undercover federal agents were looking at the armory, looking to set up someone, uh, you know, for blowing that thing up or whatever, and come to find out that it was uh, federal informants or undercover federal officers that were the ones actually scoping it out. And this is what I believe, because I don't believe that the average citizen is even capable of doing this stuff. All these things we have seen these men be accused of is what federal employees have been doing. Okay? And I don't know what makes them think that it is morally, ethically, or even legally okay to do these things. There is nothing in the Constitution that gives them the authority to terrorize people, but yet they're doing it. And then to claim, once again, the federal prosecutor claiming 
that he didn't want to turn it over because of harassment and threats made to witnesses. You know, if I was the judge, I would require him to provide documented proof that there have been harassment and threats made to witnesses, victims, and officers in the case. Okay? And two, take it upon himself to decide not to turn it over. It's, that's not his job. Okay? That's the judge's job. And the judge, from what I can remember, discovery was sealed to protect their identities. Okay, that's why we don't get to see any of discovery. So to say, you know, to have the court seal all discovery and then Steve Myrie say, I didn't turn it over because of threats and harassment to witnesses, victims and officers. Oh, my God. You know, for him to continue to use this, uh, these terms is absolutely ridiculous. You know, the defense has proven the victims were them. It was not the federal government, so he needs to uh, quit using this victim. No, the victims are still sitting on trial, and he's wanting to prosecute them again. This guy is delusional, and I truly believe he needs to be drug tested. Okay, and if there isn't such rules for random drug testing, there needs to be. Because I'll tell you what, guys, when you are charged with a legal case that could send a person to prison for the rest of their life, you need to make damn sure, or the, the federal government needs to make damn sure they're putting people in charge of these cases that are sound, of sound mind, okay? I think, I think this guy needs to be drug tested, my personal opinion, because day is night and night is day to him, or as Ammon Bundy says, you know, the truth are lies and the lies are truth. Begin reading again every day uh, for spiritual nourishment. You know, I have found that um, I have been depleted over this past year, um, past couple years really, <clears throat> after the death of my nephew, that, um, you know, every day just seems to be uh, a little more difficult for me to deal with. So uh, 2018 is going to be the year where I seek uh, spiritual nourishment again and I can feel um, that my mind and my body is hungry for it. And so I purchased a, a journal that starts out every day with some verse. Uh, it says, the introduction of it says, every new morning is spread before us like a blank canvas to paint as we choose and the beginning of each new morning provides us with a choice as to who will be guiding our brush that day will it be our egocentric selves or our loving god if we are wise we will allow our hand to be directed by the master painter the ultimate designer he is our creator companion protector confidant and friend the one who can help us face whatever life may bring only in his power can we push away feelings of doubt, disappointment, dismay, and discouragement and fill our minds with hope, joy, peace, creativity, and a sense of expectancy. Power of prayers to start your day, devotional journal, promises to aid us in this early morning quest to seek God for the guidance, comfort, instruction, direction, strength, and love. And for those who have a difficulty uh, and believing that there is a God, you know, one thing that I always recommend people is God, G-O-D, stands for good orderly direction. And if you need some of that in your life, then it would be wise to seek that God, good orderly direction. So, um, and so I've decided to do this because I have had feelings of doubt, disappointment, dismay, and discouragement. And I would like to have that replaced again with hope, joy, peace, creativity, and a sense of expectancy. I am seeking to strengthen my character and my faith and my spirit uh, this year. So uh, 
so I began reading Isaiah 30, 15, and it says, For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One, in returning and rest shall ye be saved, in quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. And um, so, of course, I went uh, to the Bible to read more of why the Lord was saying this. And it's amazing because uh, it, 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 I think it's actually a message to uh, the federal government because it says, Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel but not of me, and that cover with a covering but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin, that walk to go down into Egypt and have not asked at my mouth, to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust the shadow of Egypt. And that's what we're seeing. I mean, you know, they're calling somebody from the federal government to do an investigation of the federal government to trust in the shadow of Egypt, to trust in the shadow of the United States government. Therefore shall the strength of the Pharaoh be your shame and the trust in the shadow of Egypt your confusion. And perhaps this is what we're seeing. I mean, Steve Myrie doesn't seem to know the truth from a lie. And um, his confusion, you know, that I said earlier, I think the guy needs to be drug tested. Um, maybe this is what, uh, you know, this is what happens for those that have been off course for so long. He says, for his princes were at Zion and his ambassadors came to Haines. They were all ashamed of a people that could not profit them, nor be a help, nor profit, but a shame and also a reproach. The burden of the beast of the south in the land of trouble and anguish, from whence come the young and old lion. The viper and fairy flying serpent, they will carry their riches upon their shoulders of the young asses, and their treasures upon the bunches of camel, to a people that shall not profit them. So it says, uh, now go write it before them in a table and note it in a book, which is what I'm doing, that it may be for the time to come and forever and ever, that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not, and to us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceit. That is what they want, is it not? Uh, they don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to hear from those that can see. Uh, they are so insistent that they're right and what they're doing is okay, that they are willing to continue down this path of self-destruction. It says, get out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One to cease from before us. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One, because ye despise this word, and trust in oppression and perverseness, and stay thereon, this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out of a high wall, though his breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. <clears throat> he shall break it as a breaking of a potter's vessel that is broken into pieces. He shall not spare so that there shall not be found in the bursting of it a shred to take fire from the hearth, or to take water withal out of the pit. For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One, in returning and rest ye shall be saved, in quietness and in confidence shall be your strength, and ye would not. They won't. They won't repent, they won't turn from their ways. Uh, they won't be quiet. They're still going on and on and on. It says, um, to say a prayer, it says, Dear Lord, as I enter into this quiet time with you, calm my mind, body, and spirit. Take my hand and lead me to your side. I long to feel your touch, hear your voice, and see your face. Whatever comes to me this day, I know you will be with me as you are now within me, above me, and beside me. Thank you for strengthening my heart. Thank you for giving me the patience to wait on you. Psalms 27, 14. 
Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So, <clears throat> instead of waiting for the hearing on January 8th, I'm waiting on God. And um, I can take that to heart even with uh, this business, this uh, computer system I have back here that I'm setting it up. I'm waiting for the software. Um, I ordered it last week, the beginning of last week or the end of the week before that. And it's not going to be here till somewhere between January 2nd and the 9th. And I've been kind of frustrated because I wanted to get all of this done by the end of next week. <clears throat> and the end of next week um, is the 6th. And I am concerned I may not even have the software. Or if I do get it, I may not, you know, get all the information in it in time for this company to start the new year with it. So little frustrated that things aren't going according to my timing these darn vendors what are they thinking um, but maybe I need to see this as uh, that it's gonna get here when it's gonna get here and in the meantime there are other things that I could be doing uh, sitting quietly uh, trying to clear my mind and my body and my spirit you know, and try to feel uh, the presence of God again and just unwind from the world. Um, I feel like I've had so much on me this past year um, that I need to go take a shower. <laughs> you know, I feel like the world's just kind of thrown up all over me. So, um, and it literally, guys, it's just worn me out. So this week, uh, I do have other stuff that I need to do, but my mind keeps going to what I can't do instead of, you know, focusing on right here in front of me. So I'm going to let go and do a little bit of writing in my journal and uh, hope that by the time I'm done, I have it all down on paper and it's out of my head and I have some peace of mind. So this is all I have for you guys this evening. I hope you guys had a good Christmas. I hope you have a good New Year. And I'll talk to you later. Stars you see when you look up in the night sky. Every one of them is living in a...